Howdy everyone, Mr. Kazi here and today we're going to talk about laboratory guidelines and laboratory safety. And everyone needs to listen to this and make sure that we have safety in the laboratory because the life you save might be mine. Alright, let's get started. Remember that you can't always control what happens to you, but you can always control what happens in you. And so you are responsible for your reactions and how you react to your lab mates, whether they're stupid or whether they're uh, messing around, is up to them. You can still do what you need to do. Laboratory safety is a priority. You must read and sign your contract and have your parents read and sign your contract as well. And I'm going to warn you right now, no signed contract, no lab, guaranteed. You'll go sit uh, outside the classroom, go to the library, but you must have your laboratory contract signed. Read and know all of these rules that go with the laboratory contract. You will be tested on these guidelines. They will show up on quizzes and tests. I guarantee it. So let's keep that in mind. So, laboratory safety. Let's get started. Everyone who works in a lab must learn the rules necessary to make it a safe place. Know where the safety equipment is located. You need to know where the fire extinguishers, the eye wash, and the fume hood. You might also know where the fire blanket is and other equipment that's around the room. If you're not sure about something, ask your instructor. Make sure you know where things are. And your room should be equipped with all of these things plus a first aid kit. Now, one of the first things we need to remember is that we need to wear protective eyewear. Especially when we're dealing with chemicals and things that can fly around. Just grab your goggles and put them on. Never place your nose or mouth over a container. You do that, uh, many of the fumes that we work with are probably toxic or poisonous and we don't want to destroy any brain cells, right? So let's remember to do that. If you need to smell something or you're curious about the odor, then hold the container away from you and wave your hand over the container. That's called wafting. Don't taste anything without permission. All right, it might look pretty and it might look like a milkshake, but it's probably not and it's probably toxic, which means it'll probably kill you. Don't look into a test tube or point in the direction of another person. Test tubes sometimes will get hot really quick and things can come flying out really fast. And it might be very hot or acidic and it could do serious damage. And so we don't look into test tubes. We look at, at test tubes from the side. They're clear anyway. And we don't point them at other people. Always make sure the test tube is pointing in another direction. Never take anything from the lab without permission. It's against the law. There are chemicals and things in my room and in my workroom that you cannot take out of there. And don't think, oh, that's a cool chemical. I'm going to take it and, and go with it. Guys, this kind of thing today is against the law. Absolutely no horseplay in the laboratory. You want to goof around? You want to play namsy pamsy with each other? That's fine. Go do it somewhere else. Save it for P.E. Do not horseplay in my lab. If you do, you're out. And if you do something serious playing around, you're out for good. I will not let you back into the laboratory. Let's learn a little bit about laboratory equipment. Now, I want you to learn about laboratory equipment and learn what their names are because I think it's really funny when we don't use the proper names. And so many times I'll have somebody come in, Mr. Kazi, uh, do you have one of those, um, you know, uh, a whatchamacallit, you know, the thingamabobber that we used yesterday to do the, the, the doohickey. And we need to learn to use the proper names. That other stuff is just kind of goofy. Okay. Lab equipment. Test tube clamps. Evaporating dish. And the crucible. Funnels. Water bottle. Now let's stop here about the water bottle. One of the number one rules about that water bottle is we don't use them as squirt guns. Because one day you'll grab a wrong bottle and it won't be water and you're going to hurt someone. So, be very, very careful. Do not squirt people with water bottles. And of course we have the famous beaker. Crucible tongs for handling the crucible. And taking the Crucibles usually get very, very hot. And we want to use the crucible tongs for that. 
There's also a variety of other tongues that we have in the lab. We have um, beaker tongues, and we have just regular old tongs for picking things up when they're hot or cold. Now we have a Bunsen burner, and um, the Bunsen burner is used for heating things up. And be sure that you contact your teacher when you're using one and make sure that you learn to get a good flame. A good blue flame is what you want for the best potential. And our graduate cylinder. Get to know the graduate cylinder because we're going to use it a lot. It's one of our best measuring devices. Erlenmeyer flask, and you can just call that flask. We have the sidearm flask, and you can just call that a sidearm flask. And we have a round bottom flask, and all these flasks have different uses. Uh, the one that is going to be most important to us is the Erlenmeyer flask. All right, you have any questions? If you do, send an email to Mr. Kazi at MrKazi.com. And don't forget to check out my uh, videos and uh, PowerPoints and much, much more. A lot of handouts, a lot of good information at MrKazi.com. And don't forget to su subscribe to my YouTube channel. Studies have shown that it increases your IQ.